Sup, Vicky. Just gonna let you know that I dropped by earlier to borrow some clothes. You know, the new pale red skirt you were talking about? Um, did you just take it without my permission? I don't remember you ever asking me about it. Wait, no, of course not. I'm literally letting you know right now. <laughs> no, no, I'm not talking about a report if after you've already taken it. I'm just saying that you could have asked me about it before. What? Why do you have to be so picky? I'm letting you know about it right now. You don't have to be so angry. And besides, I even asked Dan just in case and he told me it was fine. Did he really? You know I can ask him right now, right? Yeah, he was fine with it. He said that you have more than enough clothes, so it shouldn't be a problem if I borrow some. I mean, he's not wrong that I have a lot of clothes, but you took the skirt, right? I literally just bought that, and I haven't even worn it yet. Oh, so that's why it still had the tags on. <laughs> I was thinking that maybe you hadn't noticed. I wouldn't be surprised if you went out with them on. <laughs> Don't worry, I threw them away for you. But you still knew that there was a possibility that I hadn't worn them yet. It was known that they could be brand new and you took them anyway. Why is that an issue? They're going to get worn eventually anyway, right? And they might have been brand new when I took them, but that's no longer the case anyways. <laughs> I have told you before that it's not acceptable to just borrow things like that from other people without their permission. Maybe if it was just once or twice, sure, I tolerate it. But I've literally told you so many times now to stop taking my clothes. What do you not understand about it? I mean, it's not my fault that your clothes fit me so well. <laughs> We're literally like the same height and body shape. Besides, I always make sure to return them to you. Yeah, you do. After I spend my precious time searching for my clothes only to find out that you took them, then I have to contact you over and over again before you finally give them back to me unwashed. There's even been times where they came back stained. How is that acceptable? I don't really remember. <laughs> Are you sure that happened? Yep, and I've had enough. I don't want you ever borrowing my clothes again. And if you really want to, you better ask me beforehand, not Dan. Hmm, no thanks. I can't really be bothered to ask you. <laughs> I'm kind of a busy person, you see. I don't really have that kind of time to be asking you every single time I need some clothes. Isn't that just your problem? How does that have anything to do with me? Yeah, of course it's my problem. So why would I have to ask you? You're literally being so petty over a few pieces of clothing. <laughs> you're not really seeing the issue, are you? Do you even realize that you're borrowing someone else's property? Those clothes aren't yours. There's a bare minimum you could do to be respectful. Like at least wash the clothes you borrowed, or return them as soon as you're done wearing them. Oh, so you're one of those people. <laughs> if you are really that bothered about me borrowing just a few of your clothes from your large collection, maybe you should start writing your name on them. <laughs> or you could put a lock on your wardrobe or something. It doesn't help that you always buy from the best brands. It's not like I would bother borrowing from you if you bought cheaper clothes. <laughs> it's my money. I should be able to choose what I buy without having your input on it. You are the problem here, taking other people's stuff without their permission. Your money? What a joke. You're literally just leeching off of Dan. I don't know how you have the audacity to think that you own all these clothes you bought. I'm sure Dan would be so disappointed if I tell him about how arrogant you are to me when he's not around. Like, please, just stop being so petty. I'm not leeching off of Dan. What are you talking about? I buy all my clothes with my own money. I don't know why you keep bringing him up in this conversation. Okay, I really don't want to deal with this anymore. I'm just going to tell him about today. I wonder how you like that, huh? I already know that all your clothes come from his money. I can't wait for him to expose you. <laughs> sure, go ahead. Try telling him. I'm going to warn you, though, that there's literally no point. <laughs> 
Jeez, how irritating can you be? I hate how I was just trying to be nice by telling you that I borrowed your clothes, and you just have to ruin my mood like this. I'm just about to go out too. It's the worst. Oh, I see. I'm not sure if you're going out to see someone, but it'd suck to be them. Having to see someone as irritating as you in a bad mood nonetheless? You know, if borrowing clothes from me was such a hassle, you could just return them to me right now. We wouldn't have to go through any of this if you hadn't done any of this in the first place. Nope, that won't do. I'm already dressed and ready to leave. Well then, you better return my skirt by tomorrow. I'll come pick them up. Nope, you won't. I'm not going to be at home anyway, so... Okay. I don't really care too much about what you took today. Just give them back another day then. But you borrowed one of my handbags the other day, right? I'll be sure to take that back with me. Oh, and whatever the other pieces of clothing you haven't returned to me. There's a few that I can think of off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure there's plenty more. No, I said you're not going to come over, not without my permission. Please, you're so annoying. Yeah, I'm the annoying one. Anyway, I'll be coming over tomorrow. What? No. Are you listening to me? There's no way you're coming. Who gave you permission? Hey, do you know that new designer handbag that I wanted? Well, Dan said that he's going to buy it for me for my birthday. Right. Cool. Congrats. You know, it's the same one that you have, but it's the newer model. I can't wait. I've always wanted one from that brand. Nice. I'm really happy for you. I guess that means that you won't be needing anything from me then, if what you have is newer and better. I mean, I don't really want to be seen around always using the same one, so I'll still be making good use of yours for you. I guess I won't be needing them as frequently, though. <laughs> I'm not really sure that my sarcasm is reaching you there. I've told you before, and I'll say it again. I don't want you borrowing any of my stuff, so you should stop sounding so entitled. If you're having things bought for you, then stop coming to me. But you have so much! Why are you so petty? It's not like you're lending to a stranger. I'm literally your sister-in-law. <laughs> I wish you would be nicer to me. Yeah, do you not remember when Dan and I had just gotten married? You were still borrowing my stuff back then without my permission. But I'd let it go because I thought of you as my new cute sister. But you've been going way too far recently. Do you realize that all the stuff you're taking is not cheap? But we're family, right? Family belongings are to be shared by everyone within the family. So you're saying I'm also free to take your stuff whenever I want without asking you? And it also doesn't matter how dirty the stuff is when I return it to you? Or if I just don't return it at all? Unless you specifically tell me, right? Because we're family? Well, no. Of course it doesn't work like that. I'm Dan's younger sister, and I'm also younger than you, too. Of course you can't just go around taking my stuff. You're making no sense here. But if you're trying to say that you can do whatever you want just because you're younger, there's something wrong with you. No, that's exactly what I'm saying. I'm the youngest in our family, so obviously I deserve to be treated like a princess, right? The youngest should always come first. Oh. I guess you were one of those kids where your parents gave you special treatment. Well, yeah. My mom and dad loved me the most. Now, I'm starting to see why you're like this. It all makes sense. No wonder you think you can get away with all your selfish nonsense if you're brought up to believe that kind of trash. Hmm, I didn't really care about that. You know the skirt I borrowed the other day? You had a longer one too, right? From the same designer. I need it for when I go out again tomorrow. Oh no, that is not possible. I thought about what you said the other day and decided it was a good idea. So yeah, I've put a lock on my closet, my wardrobe, my drawers, 
And anywhere else you might find my possessions. Why would you do such a thing? Well, it was your suggestion. Yes, but whatever. It's such a stupid and pointless decision. It's not like I don't have ways to get in. <laughs> Surely you're not thinking of something as simple as asking Dan. Because if you are, it won't work. He doesn't have the keys, nor does he know where they are. And besides, they're not just simple padlocks that you could easily get into anyways. Wait, so you're the only one who can open them? Yes. Wow. Who would have thought that it would be so easy? I wish you had suggested this to me earlier. But then, how the heck am I meant to borrow your clothes? I don't really plan on lending you my clothes anymore. Plus, I have a feeling that when you say borrow, you actually mean take. And I went through all of this so that you would stop taking my stuff, if it wasn't clear enough already. Besides, Dan said that he's going to buy you that designer bag for your birthday, right? You're earning some money yourself from your part-time job. How about you at least buy your own clothes? No way. That's straight up not possible. Do you know how busy college students are? There's a limit to how much time I can spend at my job, and all of that money I earn disappears in a night out anyway. How am I meant to afford any of the good brands? You literally go out every single day, last I heard. Is that what you mean when you say that college students are busy? If you decided to cut down a bit on going out, maybe you could save up to buy all that stuff that you so desperately want. I don't understand what reason is there for me to do that when you have everything I want already. It makes no sense. Well, you see, I bought all of my stuff with my own money. What this means is that they are my possessions. I don't need my sister-in-law taking them without permission and returning them with stains. But Dan and Mom were both saying that you should be the one listening to what we say because you're the wife. Well, that's news to me. So what? Do I not get basic rights as a person? I guess that's what they mean, right? <laughs> Wow, okay, so I guess anything I thought was mine is no longer mine? Exactly. I'm free to take what I want, and if you have any objections, then maybe you could just divorce Dan and leave our family. <laughs> oh, so that's how it is? I understand. Well, that's good. Now you better reflect on your actions, because putting a lock on all your stuff is way off limits. Or you better give me the keys too, and I'll consider letting you off this time. Where did all of your stuff go? I came to check out what you have to see if you have anything new, but I don't see any of it. Anywhere. Sorry, but did I give you my permission to look at my stuff? No, right? So stop looking. I don't care. Just tell me where all your handbags are. I'm about to go out for dinner with this hottie I met the other night. Oh, that's a shame. I got rid of all my belongings. Okay, but where are they? No, I actually got rid of them, like I threw them away. What? But why? You know, I've always thought the minimalistic kind of life seemed pretty cool. <laughs> I thought it was a good opportunity and everything, so I just went ahead without thinking too much and got rid of everything. Aside from the bare minimum, like the necessities. What the heck did you do? Why would you ever do that? It's such a waste. It wasn't really a waste, though. Anything that looked even remotely usable, I ended up taking to a second-hand shop or listed it online. Besides, it's all that stuff that I was eventually going to throw out anyway. It just... Happen to be that now is good timing. <laughs> Don't give me that nonsense. What the heck am I supposed to do when I go out today? Is there an issue? All of this stuff was mine to begin with, not yours. And what handbag you take to your dinner is your problem, not mine. But if you were going to throw it all away, you could have at least given it to me. Oh, I could have done that. Oh, sorry. I never thought of that. <laughs> you definitely did this on purpose, didn't you? You know there's no way you're getting away with this, right? I mean, 
I just simply threw away some of my own stuff. Why would I ever need to get your permission? It has nothing to do with you in the first place. And I'm here trying to tell you that it does. I can't believe you've done this. All those expensive clothes and designer handbags, I buy for myself because I like them. They don't exist in my wardrobe, so you can pick and choose what to take or to boost your ego with on dates. But that shouldn't stop you from lending some to me for a little bit. I don't understand. I guess part of it is because you don't return them properly to me. But honestly, it's more because of how you're acting. Do you really think I'm just going to lend my precious belongings to someone who constantly tries her best to be an annoyance at every opportunity? But you're the wife. You're meant to listen to what your family says. Well, first of all, I'm Dan's wife, not yours. And secondly, being a wife is not the same thing as being a slave. You cannot just order me as you please, expecting me to answer all your demands. I will never be lending you any of my stuff again. Not that there's anything left to lend anyways. You're done for then. You thought you would get away with doing this to me? Oh no. What's going to happen to me? <laughs> please enlighten me. I'm going to tell Dan everything you did to me so that he'll divorce you. And you think we'll actually get a divorce over something like this? Yeah, this isn't a choice. I'm going to force him to. It's for his own good anyway. He should divorce you and marry someone who isn't useless and is nice to me. I'm sure mom and dad would be delighted too. I'm sure they would, little princess. Yep, mom and dad totally hate you. <laughs> they always go on about how you're such a bad wife and how you're always gloomy too. They said that you need to be more disciplined to be more fitting for our family. You know that, right? Oh, is that so? I'm sure they don't understand that the reason I took look so gloomy is not my fault. It's only natural that I'm not happy with the way I'm treated. Mom and Dad are even nice enough to give you training just because you're still lacking as a wife. But not only are you not grateful about it, you think you have the right to complain about how you're treated? Where are your manners? So, when I get verbally abused every time I go visit, I'm supposed to be thankful for the training? Are you kidding me? It just goes to show how bad of a wife you are, right? Mom and Dad are always so nice, so it's obvious that you're the issue. Well, I guess all of this is irrelevant, because you're not going to be part of the family much longer. <laughs> you better hurry up on that divorce. I don't want you stealing Dan's money any longer, you parasite. I'm fine with that, but is it really okay? <laughs> what do you mean? Of course it's okay. <laughs> Dan doesn't need a useless wife like you. There is going to be joy all around when you're gone. Sure, I guess. I'll do exactly as you asked then. Don't worry, I'll make sure the divorce is nice and quick, just like you wanted. Well, you said it. Better not change your mind now. You better get it done by tomorrow. I won't accept any later. Sure. I had Dan sign the papers previously, so I'll go submit them right now. Yes, go right this moment and you better not be lying. Okay, that's enough already. I get the point. I'll do as you say. Hey, wait! You better get back together with Dan immediately! Wait, why would I go back? So that you can explain why you divorced him? Am I the one who's crazy here? I'm sure you were the one that told me to. Multiple times at that. Could you not use your brain a little? I was just making a little joke. How did you not understand me? Now undo the divorce and come back here right now. Oh, you were joking? Sorry about that. You sounded pretty serious about it. Will I go back? Can't do that. I was actually thinking of getting that divorce anyway before you even told me to. You just gave me that extra little push I needed, and it was a pretty good time to do so. No, it wasn't. It couldn't have been worse timing. Just come back. What are we meant to do from now on? 
Are you talking about the financial support I was providing your family? Because if that's what you mean, then I can't do that for you all anymore. I was told to divorce and got kicked out after all. I'm not going to send money to my ex or his family. No, but there are some key issues with that. Yeah, of course there are. For you especially. The apartment you're living in now is my old apartment. And I agreed to keep paying the rent up until you graduated. Yes, and that's exactly what I mean. How do you expect me to go to college now without an apartment? I mean, you could always just live at your parents' house and attend college from there. <laughs> what is it, a three-hour trip to get to your college? You're young and seemingly full of energy. I'm sure you'll be fine. It's out of the question. It used to take me an hour and a half to get to work, and I managed... Double that is probably not all that bad. Of course, a drive like that means you can't stay out drinking anymore. That's fine for someone like you, but unlike you, every second is important. There's no way I can spend three hours commuting every day. What do you want me to do about it? Come back. I've been telling you. I would rather not go back to being the cash cow for your family. No way. I'm sure you were surprised, though, weren't you? Getting kicked out of the apartment as soon as I divorced your brother? Were you thinking that Dan was paying for your rent the whole time? <laughs> what a joke. Aw, uh, I can just imagine your face when you found out. <laughs> you knew this and didn't warn me? Of course I knew. You think I was paying for the apartment by accident? If you think that I'm kind enough to keep paying for you after what you and your family put me through, <laughs> I don't know that you have the brains to finish college. And sorry to hit you when you're down, but you're not the only one who's about to suffer. You know, Dan's income isn't that impressive, right? Most of the money that was being sent to your parents came from me. Not him. No way. No then that would mean all that pocket money that my parents would give to me came from you as well? That's right. I didn't think much of it at the beginning because it wasn't like Dan wasn't working. I just thought I'd help your family out as I was earning more than him. But I started to think recently that I'm probably better off just buying a house for myself instead. After all, it's my money that I worked hard to earn. I was a little hesitant because buying a house would mean that I wouldn't be able to support your family as much, but now that's no longer a problem. Guess what I did? Wait, you already bought a house? Yep. There was one that I had been eyeing for a while now, so it's not like I needed time to look. And that would answer your question of where all my stuff is. I already finished moving in. <laughs> and what did Dan say about it? Did he not stop you, or at least try to convince you not to leave? Oh, he was just satisfied about how clean the room was after I took all my stuff with me. The fact that he didn't even notice that I was trying to move out, <laughs> I was trying so hard not to laugh. So you've been planning all of this for a while? I thought it was an impulsive thing because I told you to leave. Oh, for sure. Don't you think it's such a waste of my time? I'm literally working so hard out here, the most of the money I make just gets used by your ungrateful family. It doesn't help that Dan doesn't even help out with the housework. And the absolute worst part of it all? I'm given zero respect or gratitude for any of it. I just get hate instead. I was so done with all of it, I'm not your personal cash cow. That's not what I think of you. Oh yeah? Because you didn't even know that I was all my money? I guess for you it would be more accurate that I was your personal wardrobe. No, that's not true. Then what? What was that about how I was a useless wife and I was expected to follow all your demands? I don't remember ever being treated respectfully by you. That's because I simply didn't know. It was my parents who said those things about you, and I just took their word. If I had known that you were doing so much for us, I would have never said such things. So being oblivious about it is an excuse to say whatever you please to someone? 
Do you realize that's disrespectful enough on its own? No, what I said to you wasn't from disrespect. I just thought that I was disciplining you. Yeah, I'm not someone that needs to receive discipline from you, thanks. Well, don't worry. What's done is done. And it's not like we'll see each other anymore. Not if I'm lucky, at least. You can't be serious. Oh, I am very serious. Not a single person would ever submit to force papers as a joke. But maybe it's not too late to say you've changed your mind? I think if you go now, maybe it's not too late. What do you not understand about this? I have no interest in going back to that life. I hated it. The fact that you're getting so desperate now that it inconveniences you, I can't even laugh. It's pathetic. And you were saying that I was useless and just leeching off your family? Well, now you know. You were the parasite all along, surviving off of my earnings? Sorry, not just you. Your entire family. You and your entitled parents are living off of my income without batting an eye at how hard I was working? But I really can't live now. How am I meant to go to college? I can't even have my friends come over anymore. Yeah, I'm not surprised. The apartment you were staying in was about as good as it gets. Your average student doesn't get the luxury to stay in a place that nice. Oh, and the queen-size bed I left for you? I'm sure you'll miss that too. Must have been a great college life living somewhere like that, being so close to both the campus and downtown as well. Well, now that none of this matters to me, I've stopped paying for it. So yeah, you gotta leave if you haven't already. Dan's not gonna pay for such an expensive apartment for you. But please, that place was so important to me. You have so much money, you can spare it. None of that is my issue. You can say whatever you want and keep crying. I'm not going to change my mind. Maybe if I was treated as a human with a basic level of respect from the beginning, it could have been a different story. Who knows? Although, that's probably too much to ask, considering those parents of yours and how you've been raised. Then what can I do to keep living there? How about I apologize to you? Oh, please. Don't apologize to me. I'm ready any time for that. Unfortunately, though, a single apology is not enough to make up for the damage that's been done. But it might make me think that you haven't lost all hope as a person. But no matter what you do, I won't be going back on my decision. I don't want to be married to Dan ever again, nor do I want to ever have to interact with you or your family. How are you going to take responsibility for me not being able to go to college? What responsibility? That has nothing to do with me. Besides, you're making such a big deal about it. You just have to leave the apartment you were living in until now. It's not going to stop you from going to college. <laughs> just commute from home. It's only three hours. <laughs> Can you stop making fun of me? I'll stop making fun of you when you stop being a clam. How about you stop crying to me for help and just take a look at reality? If you stop going out so much and work more hours, maybe you could keep living close to your campus in a different apartment or dorm or something. You'd be surprised at how much of a difference it makes when you're not eating out or drinking and partying every other night. But I'm in college. It's not possible for me to not go out and have fun every day. I literally don't have that kind of time to be working. The two shifts I do a week is already too much. You seem to have developed a very wrong idea of how life works, but I'll leave that to you to figure out for yourself. But I'm just going to give you some advice. If you don't hold back on the fun a little, you'll have some very unfun experiences trying to graduate. Those parents of yours might have treated you like a princess when you were growing up, but I'm not sure how they'll react if you repeat a year. But that wouldn't be an issue if you just came back. I'll apologize, so please help me. Nope. I've changed. 
I decided to stand up for myself and not let people use me as their personal wallet. My money's mine and I could care less about your issue. Please, can you reconsider? Are you really just going to abandon us like this? Well, yeah. I'm basically just plucking the leech that has been attached to me for the past few years. If anything, I was also crazy to just let it happen and not do anything about it. <laughs> well then, good luck from now on. See ya. Please, I'm so sorry. Hello? Hello? Vicky? Come back! Shortly after, I started my new life, no longer shackled by that dreadfully annoying sister-in-law of mine. My clothes and handbags can breathe a sigh of relief, no longer at risk of being mistreated by her at any moment. Although I would say that her parents were just as much of an issue as she was, if not actually the bigger problem. After all, you could fault them for raising her in that way. I can see why she lacks some respect for others when she has parents who treat people like dogs. And as for why the issues with respect were more apparent in her than Dan, I would assume it has to do with how she was the favorite child getting spoiled as their lovely little princess. Pretty much right after the divorce had gone through, I was bombarded with spam messages from the rest of the family. Did they not realize that I get enough of that already from their daughter alone? While I didn't care about what they had to say, I was certainly concerned for the health of my phone and my sanity with the amount of notifications. So yes, I blocked every single one of them. <laughs> Did I hesitate? No. Nope. Not at all, as I was certain that I would never go back to that nightmare of a family. Unfortunately, blocking the four of them didn't turn out to be enough. It didn't take long until I was messaged by one of Dan's friends. How desperate! For some reason, Dan didn't realize how things would change if I left his life, so he was caught off guard at how hard it was to take care of the house without me. So, yeah, there were some attempts at getting back together with me through his friends. It didn't take much to put an end to that, though. All I had to do was explain my reasons behind the divorce. He then lost all support from his friends. As for my life, I finally finished sorting out and cleaning all the stuff I took with me, and it's all looking very nice. It certainly does feel good to not have to pay for a bratty kid's expensive apartment or an ungrateful family's living expenses. With that lease cancelled, I heard that Rita did not like the option of trying to afford her own place and unwillingly settled for the three-hour commute. I'm sure she's delighted. <laughs> there was only a few years between getting married and the divorce. It was a pretty short marriage at the end of the day, but it was a very painfully long one for me. I missed none of it, so I was very satisfied after the divorce went through. And the absolute worst part of it all? I'm given zero respect or gratitude for any of it. I just received hate instead. Well, now that I've been able to remove myself from that parasitic relationship, I think I have the space both mentally and financially for myself. Let's hope I've learned from my mistakes so that I can live more freely from now on and find someone who actually shares my values. Rita probably thought I had infinite amounts of money, but while I earn a lot, I'm no millionaire, so buying a house was a pretty big hit financially. With that being said, I feel that I deserve to reward myself for getting that divorce and changing my life for the better. The new house is pretty big and those closets aren't going to fill themselves. I heard one of my favorite designers is just about to release a new line though. 